These colorized photos reveal a new perspective on the stories of the 1960s and 1970s, altering the way we think about the biggest events of the era. Take a closer look at the groovy past reimagined in full color. This colorized photo captures Martin Luther King Jr., a key figure in the civil rights movement, and his message of nonviolent protest during the 1950s and 1960s. The truth behind the iconic image of Sophia Loren and Jane Mansfield is much less catty than the myth suggests. In reality, Mansfield was simply invited to the event and Loren respected her for doing what she had to do to get some press. Elvis had a close relationship with his parents and according to Gladys, he was raised to be a kind and respectful young man. Susan Sarandon has always been open about her work and the way she approaches what she does on screen, explaining that she just pulls from her life and goes from there. Could it be possible to mow the lawn without being covered in sweat and grass clippings by the end of the morning? In 1957, the future of lawn mowing was at our fingertips with an air foam cushion seat, running lights, a telephone, air conditioning, and a cooling system to provide icy drinks on a hot day. This mower was basically a tiny car that could also provide whatever lawn care was needed. Riding mowers are already expensive, but there's no way that the cost of this beautiful space-age machine was anything less than astronomical. Still, we'd love to take a whirl on this baby. The 1960s saw the rise of surfing in popular culture, with films and TV shows featuring the sport, like Beach Blanket Genre and Sally Field winning a role in the 1965 show Gidget for being real and authentic. Back in 1974, Photographer Daniel Sorin captured some colorized photos of a young Robin Williams performing as a mime in Central Park. Sorin was drawn to Williams' intensity and physical fluidity, and was able to capture some amazing shots. The 1970s embraced natural living, from growing food to wearing organic fabrics. Crocheted bathing suits became popular for their sexy and natural appeal. Should they make a comeback? After leaving the Beatles, Lennon went on to create classic albums and work with Yoko Ono and her Plastic Ono Band, including rehearsals for a show at Madison Square Garden with the rock band Elephant's Memory as part of Lennon's two charities concerts, one to one. Sophia Loren, the most gorgeous babe who ever appeared on the silver screen, had to wait for people to recognize her beauty, and she never thought she needed to change her nose. The iconic couple, John F. Kennedy and Jacqueline Bouvier, met at a dinner party in 1952 and quickly became engaged, going on vacation at the Kennedy family home in Hyannisport on Cape Cod. Their engagement photos were so beloved that an entire issue of Life magazine was dedicated to them, showcasing the happiness of young love. Jungle Pam was a driving force in the 1970s drag racing scene, inspiring young women and becoming a focal point of Jungle Jim's pit crew.
During the 1950s and 1960s, Audrey Hepburn's film career ranged from Hitchcock's thrillers to an iconic New York story and the tale of a young woman learning how to go from the gutter to high society. She appealed to viewers who were into her sexy, yet quiet demeanor as well as audiences who wanted to watch a girl with brains on screen. When Hepburn received an honor from the Film Society of Lincoln Center in 1991, she displayed her classic self-deprecating humor while speaking with the New York Times. The Rat Pack, consisting of Sinatra, Sammy, Dino, Joey Bishop, and Peter Lawford, were known for their wild antics and close-knit performances in Las Vegas during the 1960s. This photo captures Arnold Schwarzenegger at the Mr. Universe contest in London in 1968, when he was just 25 years old and had yet to achieve the success he is known for today. This photo of Marilyn Monroe, taken by Philippe Halsman for Life magazine, captures her in a different light than other photos. During their second session, Halsman was impressed by the things in her apartment, showing her striving for self-improvement. In 1962, when Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali met, Ali was still known as Cassius Clay and X didn't know who he was. However, X was attracted to Ali's contagious quality, and their friendship grew over time, eventually becoming comrades in arms by 1964. In 1969 Woodstock promised three days of love, peace, and music, but when a torrential downpour turned the festival grounds in upstate New York into a mud pit the whole thing could have fallen apart. But it didn't. The bands showed up, they played, and people grooved out until they couldn't stand anymore. In 1967, Rocco Morabito captured the moment when telephone worker Randall G. Champion was saved by his partner J.D. Thompson after accidentally touching a low voltage line. The anti-bra movement started at the 1968 Miss America pageant in Atlantic City, where women protested, enforced femininity, by burning bras, makeup, girdles, corsets, and even mops. Throughout the end of the 60s, bra burnings became the norm on college campuses, but by the 1970s, the movement against enforced femininity became a fashion statement. Women stopped wearing bras on the catwalk, at dance clubs, and on the big screen, and it became the norm among celebrities and regular women alike. This is the Bluebird Proteus CN7, a British-designed gas turbine-powered vehicle that set the world land speed record on July 17, 1964 in Lake Eyre, Australia. In order to break the then-current record of 394 miles per hour, the shape of the car was incredibly important. Based on the Railton Mobile Special, the Bluebird Proteus hit 400 miles per hour without a tail fin, but with the addition of a tail fin and a successful gas turbine engine design, the Proteus 705, the Bluebird set a land speed record of 403.1 miles per hour. Raquel Welch, the ultimate groovy era sex symbol, has been captivating audiences with her sultry performances since the 1960s, from her iconic cave woman role in One Million Years BC to her mesmerizing appearances in Bedazzled and Bandolero. The seedy and sultry Soho district of London is the hidden red light district of England. 
After prostitutes were pushed off the street in 1959 many of them moved into members-only clubs in Soho in order to cater to people looking for something a little dangerous outside of their home. In 1969 Reverend Vernon Mitchell toured Soho's thriving sex venues to determine which of them should be censored. At the time there were about 200 sex clubs in London and while locals weren't thrilled about the idea of having a red light district they also didn't want a strict, sexless reverend telling them what they could and couldn't do. During his tour of Soho Reverend Mitchell watched strip shows, looked at advertising, and met with sex workers in order to determine what should and shouldn't be censored. It's unclear if Mitchell actually accomplished anything. Getting into a car with a random stranger was a regular practice for young people in the 1960s and 1970s who wanted to see America, even for just getting across town. During the 1956 Cannes Film Festival, Brigitte Bardot visited Pablo Picasso at his studio in Valoris, accompanied by Jerome Briere from Life magazine. Despite Picasso's reputation as a ladies' man, the photos captured an interesting interaction between the young star and the Cubist master. Rosa Parks is a key figure of the civil rights movement. She stood up to a racist status quo by refusing to move to the back of a bus, ultimately leading to a 13-month boycott and gaining support from figures like Martin Luther King Jr. In 1959, Fidel Castro spent time in New York City, tromping around with a public relations person and taking the Big Apple by storm. This photo opportunity was set up by his personal relations expert and everyone thought the entire thing was super cute, of course no one realized he was communist yet. He spent the rest of his time in New York holding babies, eating hot dogs, and feeding peanuts to elephants at the ZOO, but the goodwill didn't last. It's likely that Grace Kelly wouldn't have been as famous if it was not for her disastrous audition for the movie Taxi, but John Ford saw her potential and cast her in Megambo, leading to an Oscar nomination and Golden Globe win. On May 28, 1963, Martin Luther King Jr. visited Lipstick City of the Los Angeles Freedom Rally addressing close to 40,000 people at Wrigley Field in South Los Angeles. The rally brought out celebrities like Dorothy Dandridge, Rita Moreno, Paul Newman, Sammy Davis Jr., and Dick Gregory, and King stated, Birmingham or Los Angeles, the cry is always the same. We want to be free. The 1970s were the last decade in America that cruising culture was really a thing. Young drivers hung all night on their local strip, whether they were in the San Fernando Valley or Central Texas. Gas was cheap, the cars were cool, and the tunes were grooving. In many instances there was nothing else to do in town other than drive around until curfew and hang out with your friends. Photographer Rick McCloskey said, Every town in America had a strip where kids would take their cars and go hang out whether it was only a block long, big towns, little towns, cities. It was really a thing for everybody to be involved at some point. In the 1960s, Iran saw a mix of Western culture and traditional ways, with an influx of style from American and European visitors. The Shah pushed for modernization, but his authoritarian rule led to a revolution ending the embrace of Western culture. Marilyn Monroe, the blonde bombshell, felt ignored for most of her childhood until she hit puberty, when suddenly everything changed for her.
The shot captures Dylan at the Newport Folk Festival, where he caused controversy by going electric and changing rock music forever. At the Democratic National Convention in 1960, the party had to make a choice, follow the young Senator John F. Kennedy into the breach or stick with the old guard for the upcoming presidential election. Kennedy was squaring off with a number of elder statesmen in the Democratic Party in July 1960, but with the help of his brother Robert, who was then his campaign manager, he managed to secure the Democratic nomination. According to photographer John Lonegard, this photo was snapped in the moment that JFK told his brother who he would choose for his running mate. After the assassination of John F. Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson took on the fight for civil rights and worked with Dr. King to pass a bill. In his State of the Union address, Johnson emphasized the importance of passing the civil rights bill in honor of Kennedy. Yoko Ono's Fly album was recorded alongside John Lennon's Imagine and served as the soundtrack to her short film of the same name. She had to re-record her vocals for Open Your Box due to concerns about the lyrics. Alfred Hitchcock was a unique filmmaker who made technically well-made, tense, and often funny crowd-pleasing films. He crafted his films to maximize terror and build a haunting mood with a distinctive style, but he described his approach to filmmaking as, some films are slices of life, mine are slices of cake. Astrid Kircher, a German photographer, took this early selfie with the Beatles in 1960, during her brief engagement to Stuart Sutcliffe, the fifth Beatle. She was responsible for some of the earliest photos of the band. Los Angeles was taken over by drag racing after World War II, as soldiers returned with money and a need to regain their lost youth. They raced on dry lake beds and eventually drag strips were built to keep them from getting their cars dirty. Each strip had its own unique features, whether in Long Beach or under the old 6th Street Bridge. It's a lost time that will never get back. On August 28, 1963, Martin Luther King Jr. led the March on Washington, merging his March for Freedom with Philip Randolph's March for Fair Treatment and Equal Opportunity for Black Americans, culminating with King's, I Have a Dream, speech. Pontiac built a concept car for the General Motors Motorama in 1956, with a futuristic design theme. The De Mare was a two-door sport roadster designed by Harley Earl, but never made it to production and was scrapped in 1958. Joan Collins, who has been a part of Hollywood for almost 75 years, embraced her iconic style when she was cast in Dynasty, even though it was not the norm for TV leading ladies. Before becoming the 41st President of the United States, George H. W. Bush served as a pilot in the Navy during World War II and married Barbara Pierce in 1945. He then attended Yale University and pursued a career in politics, eventually winning a seat in the U.S. House of Representatives in 1966. Kate Webb served as a reporter for United Press International UPI, during the Vietnam War, one of the few female war correspondents to embed themselves with soldiers. 
She was captured by North Vietnamese forces and believed to have been killed, but emerged from the jungle after 23 days as a captive with a deeper understanding of the military. The original series of Star Trek was a cultural touchstone for regular television viewers and nerds alike, so beloved that it was the focus of Mad Magazine issue number 115 from December 1967, featuring a parody titled, Star Blatch. In 1967 President Lyndon B. Johnson was presented with a turkey by Senator Everett Dirksen and representatives from the poultry industry and farm organizations. The turkey had a sign around its neck reading, Good Eating Mr. President. President Johnson's decision to lean into the suggestion that he pluck, cook, and carve the turkey presented to him from the poultry industry is unclear. The room, initially known as the Roosevelt Room, became known as the Fish Room, because of the president's penchant for keeping his aquariums in the space, which is honestly the last thing you would think a president would do. Just look at this saucy contortionist. Obviously, she didn't get this good without some serious dedication and practice. James Dean's career was too short, yet he continues to inspire fashion and performance with his groundbreaking style and the way he turned every role into an entire meal. In just three films and a few minor television roles, Dean became a Hollywood icon, something that feels unfathomable in this day and age. Today, Dean is synonymous with teenage rebellion and angst, but he was just a quiet young man from Fairmount, Indiana. Thanks to his performances in East of Eden and Rebel Without a Cause, Dean gave audiences everything he had, we'll never forget him. Paul McCartney, one of the most famous people ever, was inspired by his wife Linda to go vegetarian and think outside the box when it came to eating. He's also shined a light on vegetarianism and veganism. Marilyn Monroe, one of the most beautiful women on the planet, claimed she didn't have time to date while working in a picture, and that she didn't think in terms of dates per week. Johnny Cash never actually served time in prison, but he did perform at Folsom Prison for his album at Folsom Prison, solidifying his image as a honky-tonk outlaw. Elizabeth Taylor's stunning beauty and her role in the film, Giant, from 1956 made her one of the most sought-after actresses on the planet. In the film, she's caught in between Rock Hudson and James Dean, sparking rumors of a love affair on set. However, Taylor clarified in an interview with Rolling Stone that there was no personal connection between the three actors. On November 22, 1963, America watched in horror as President Kennedy was assassinated in the middle of his trip to Dallas. Only two hours and eight minutes after one of the most shocking moments in American history Lyndon Johnson was sworn into the presidency aboard Air Force One at Love Field Airport. Aside from transporting Johnson, Jacqueline Kennedy, and the president's staff it also held the former President Kennedy's remains. In a few short hours Johnson had ascended to the highest office in the land. It must have weighed heavily on President Johnson. The Dick Van Dyke Show, which aired from 1961 to 1966, straddled the line between vaudeville-influenced shows of the 1950s and the more social issue-inclined sitcoms of the 1970s, taking inspiration from Carl Reiner's life.
Big J. McNeely, known as the King of the Honkers, was a tenor saxophone player in the 1940s whose performances helped shape the early rock and roll era. His wild on-stage antics and high-energy playing style made the saxophone the go-to instrument for soloists in early rock and roll. Grace Kelly, after leaving her acting career to become the Princess of Monaco, found herself adjusting to a royal lifestyle, including her children having to be aware of their duties. During the Vietnam War, the Viet Song were consistently outgunned and outmanned, but their knowledge of local terrain and their penchant for taking the Americans by surprise helped them keep the Vietnam War firmly in their pockets. Even though they were never able to match American firepower, their use of surprise kept U.S. forces on their toes, and their actions helped turn the Vietnam War into a depressing stalemate. The 1963 Tour de France was the 50th instance of this iconic bicycle race, covering a distance of 4,138 kilometers with 130 riders split into 13 teams, and Jacques Anquetil took home his third Tour title in a row on July 14, 1963. Ringo was always a fan favorite and even John Lennon recorded a demo of a song meant for him before his death. Ringo felt emotional hearing Lennon mention his name in the demo. <laughs> 